Hello, this week something landed on our desks that we're quite excited about. We weren't expecting it, but it turns out it's been quite exciting. It's the OnePlus One. It's from a Chinese brand, a startup, which is going to be something that could shake up the market. It's got really high specs and a low price. I mean, John, you've been using it for a couple of days. What do you think? Initially, when I saw it, it sounded too good to be true. Uh, £230 for a 16 gig phone with specs which rival the likes of the S5, the M8, the Z2. Seems very strange. You pick up the phone, it feels very well built. It's, it, it's polycarbonate, but that's fine. It is sturdy, and for the price point, you can't complain. And then you look inside, it's got a Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 processor. That's exactly the same that you'll find in the S5 and the likes. So it's, it's got good specs off the, off the front. And the biggest thing about it, though, is the operating system it runs. It's based on Android 4.4.2 KitKat, which is the latest version, yeah. but it has the community-driven Cyogen mod OS laid over the top, which looks very similar to Android, but gives lots of extra little features, making the user interface a bit more intuitive and gives you greater flexibility in terms of personalization and customization. So do you think that, I mean, there'll be some people out there that haven't really heard of CyanogenMod. It's, you know, it's a fairly well-known uh, version of, of something you can put onto your phone if you've got a, a, you know, an element of ability in terms of you know, opening up and giving the chance to put new operating systems on there. So but this is designed you know, for the consumer from the offset, so that CyanogenMod is, is the operating system you're going to get used to. So do you think someone who likes stock Android would get used to that quite quickly and enjoy it more? Yeah, if you use stock Android, it's, as I said, it's very similar. And it's the additional little features that you'll notice as you come to use it more and more. They're nice. They're not in your face. It's not like a heavy overlay like touch with your sense. This is still very much an Android experience with a few additional benefits. And so you said it's, it's cheap. You know, the, the, what kind of specs are we talking here? I, I know you said it was 801 processor. That's really, that's top end. You know, so that's yeah, really a, good. a quad core processor, 3 gig of RAM, and Adreno 330 GPU. These are all the specs that we're seeing in the top end phones. Back camera is 13 megapixels. It's got everything that you want. It's got a Sony X more lens as well. So they haven't gone cheap on the camera. They was it good camera? As from this is a pre-production model, so yeah. it's not final software, it's not final hardware. But from what I've been using, it's it's a good enough camera. It's not the most dazzling, but it's certainly up there with the others. Yeah, and and so what are the trade-offs? I mean, that's the worry that I've got. You know, when you get something like this, usually it's a it's a lower end chip, or it's you know you've got some storage issues, something like that. I mean. Where, where are we losing the money here? Well, you see, that, that's where I'm a bit confused because there's nowhere really obvious that you're losing the money. There's no micro SD slot, which will be an issue for some people, but there is a 64 gig version and it's only 40 quid more or $50 more. So, you know, to get 64 gig, that's going to be more than enough for a lot of people. Yeah. There are still a few who like micro SD and that may be a real deal breaker as the Cyogen mod will be popular with the sort of techies and developers out there who will want to really push its limits and being limited by storage may be an issue. Also, you can't remove the battery. It's not a huge issue. Again, the 801 processor, as we know, is very power efficient. So the battery life should be good. As I said, this is development software still, but the battery life has been, has been very good so far for me on it. But I mean, that, that just because you can't remove the battery doesn't mean it's a, it's, a, it's a bad device. I mean, it's whether or not this is really a developer's phone, someone who wants to tinker with it and play with it and, get, and, and, and really get to grips with what it can do. You know, you feel like there should be an opportunity to, to whack in like a, a really three times bigger power pack, a huge cover on the back to, to maintain it. Because this isn't the HTC One. This is, this is a phone for a different market. It's, yeah. it's basically that, you know, the One has a design benefit by not having a removable battery. This is more of... Is it more of a hacker's phone? That's the question. Is it something for those, or is it for people who want a cheap, really good smartphone? Well, well it, it, it's both. I mean, for the hacker community and those who are really interested in Android and getting their hands dirty, then it's, it's a great device, as long as the storage issue isn't a problem. Yeah. For anyone who's looking for a cheap, high-powered phone, this is also a great option. The issue is that those, that sort of market may have not heard of OnePlus and may not be aware of the phone at all. And it's not clear if it's going to be particularly well promoted at any stores, if it's all going to be online sales. It will go on general sale in June, but before then it's all invite only. And OnePlus haven't been completely clear of how global that availability will be and whether it will actually make its way into stores, which may limit the number of people who even hear about it. So this is a great phone, cheap price, loads of great components. Does that mean the likes of HTC, Samsung, Apple, are they ever charging us for their flagship phones? It's Definitely going to make them sit up and take note of what OnePlus is doing. It's a very interesting proposition, and it's surprisingly how cheap it actually is. In regards to whether if they're overcharging us or not, probably not. 
it's not just a matter of throwing a load of components together a week before launch and sticking them into a handset. It takes time and money. It takes years for these phones to come to fruition. And th that's not a cheap process by any means. So we're not really being overcharged. It just means that the likes of Samsung and HTC and Apple are, are making a, a wider profit margin. And while it may be considerable, it's certainly no different to any other product in any other sort of market. Uh, OnePlus will probably be making a lot less per handset, and that raises issues of whether it can sustain itself. Google has the backing of all its other services, plus it can make money off the Google Play after selling a Nexus device, so it's more covered. With the OnePlus, th there's no actual extra value after the sale of the handset, so it could run itself into the ground.